Welcome. This is the one year Bible reading for February 7th, and we are beginning at the beginning of chapter 26 in Exodus today regarding the construction and building of the tabernacle. Make the tabernacle from 10 curtains of finely woven linen. Decorate the curtains with blue, purple, and scarlet thread and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. These 10 curtains must be all exactly the same size, 42 feet long and six feet wide. Join five of these curtains together to make one long curtain. Then join the other five into a second long curtain. Put loops of blue yarn along the edge of the last curtain in each set. The 50 loops along the edge of one curtain are to match the 50 loops along the edge of the other curtain. Then make 50 gold clasps and fasten the long curtains together with the clasps. In this way, the tabernacle will be made of one continuous piece. Make 11 curtains of goat hair cloth to serve as a tent covering for the tabernacle. These 11 curtains must all be exactly the same size, 45 feet long and 6 feet wide. Join five of these curtains together to make one long curtain and join the other six into one, a second long curtain. Allow three feet of material from the second set of the curtains to hang over the front of the sacred tent. Make 50 loops for one edge of the large curtain. Then make 50 bronze clasps and fasten the loops of the long curtains with the clasps. In this way, the tent covering will be made of one continuous piece. The remaining three feet of this tent covering will be left to hang over the back of the tabernacle. Allow 18 inches of each of uh, remaining material to hang down over each side so the tabernacle is completely covered. Complete the tent covering with a protective layer of tanned ram skins and a layer of fine goat skin leather. For the framework of the tabernacle, construct frames of acacia wood. Each frame must be 15 feet high and 27 e inches wide with two pegs under each frame. Make all the frames identical. Make 20 of these frames to support the curtains on the south side of the tabernacle. Also make 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame, with the pegs fitting securely into the bases. For the north side of the tabernacle, make another 20 frames with their 40 silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make six frames for the rear, the west side of the tabernacle, along with two additional frames to reinforce the rear corners of the tabernacle. These corner frames will be attached at the bottom and firmly attached at the top with a single ring, forming a single corner unit. Make both of these corner units the same way. So there will be eight frames at the rear of the tabernacle set in 16 silver bases, two bases under each frame. Make crossbars of acacia wood to link the frames, five crossbars for the north side of the tabernacle and five for the south side. Also make five crossbars for the rear of the tabernacle, which will face west. The middle crossbar attached halfway up the frames will run all the way from one end of the tabernacle to the other. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to hold the crossbars. Overlay the crossbars with gold as well. Set up this tabernacle according to the pattern you were shown on the mountain. For the inside of the tabernacle, make a special curtain of finely woven linen Decorate it with purple, blue, and scarlet thread, and with skillfully embroidered cherubim. Hang this curtain on gold hooks attached to four posts of acacia wood. Overlay the posts with gold and set them in four silver bases. Hang the inner curtain from clasps and put the Ark of the Covenant in the room behind it. This curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Then put the Ark's cover, the place of atonement, on top of the Ark of the Covenant inside the most holy place. Place the table outside the inner, inner curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and place the lampstand across the room on the south side. Make another curtain for the entrance to the sacred tent. Make it of finely woven linen and embroider it with exquisite designs using blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Craft five posts from acacia wood. Overlay them with gold and hang the curtain from them with gold hooks. Cast five bronze bases for the posts. Using acacia wood, construct a square altar seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet high. Make horns for each of its four corners so that the horns and altar are all one piece. Overlay the altar with bronze. 
make ash buckets, shovels, basins, meat, forks, fire pans, all of it bronze. Make a bronze grating for it and attach four bronze rings at its four corners. Install the grating halfway down the side of the altar under the ledge. For carrying the altar, make poles from acacia wood and overlay them with bronze. Insert the poles through the rings on the two sides of the altar. The altar must be hollow, made from planks. Build it just as you were shown on the mountain. Then make the courtyard for the tabernacle enclosed with curtains made of finely woven linen. On the south side, make the curtains 150 feet long. They will be held up by 20 posts set securely in 20 bronze bases. Hang the curtains with silver hooks and rings. Make the curtains the same on the north side, 150 feet of curtains held up by 20 posts set securely in bronze bases. Hang the curtains with silver hooks and rings. The curtains on the west side of the courtyard will be 75 feet long, supported by 10 posts set into 10 bases. The east end of the courtyard, the front, will also be 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance will be on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side will be 22 and a half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. The curtain on the left side will also be 22 and a half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. For the entrance to the courtyard, make a curtain that is 30 feet long. Make it from finely woven linen and decorate it with beautiful embroidery in purple, blue, and scarlet thread. Support it with four posts, each securely set in its own base. All the posts around the courtyard must have silver rings and hooks and bronze bases. So the entire courtyard will be 150 feet long and 75 feet wide, with curtain walls seven and a half feet high, made from finely woven linen. The bases for the posts will be made of bronze. All the articles used in the rituals of the tabernacle, including all the tent pegs used to support the tabernacle and the courtyard curtains must be made of bronze. Command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light, to keep the lamps burning continually. And that's great with our parable we're gonna read in just a moment. The lampstand will stand in the tabernacle in front of the inner curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant. Aaron and his sons must keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence all night. This is a permanent law for the people of Israel, and it must be observed from generation to generation. And now we're turning to Matthew, beginning of chapter 25. And as I just mentioned, this parable of the 10 bridesmaids, um, I have heard mentioned so many times over the past few months, uh, seems so uh, important in our day and age. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Then he left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, 
You gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man and harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to one of the give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Psalm 31, a Psalm of David. O Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me de be disgraced. Save me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be my rock of protection, a fortress where I will be safe. You are my rock and my fortress. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. Pull me from the trap my enemy has set for me, for I find protection in you alone. I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. I hate those who worship worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love, for you have seen my troubles and you care about the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to my enemies, but have set me in a safe place. Proverbs 8, 1 through 11. Listen as wisdom calls out, hear as understanding raises her voice. On the hilltop, along the road, she shakes, she takes her stand at the crossroads. By the gates at the entrance to the town, on the road leading in, she cries aloud, I call to you, all of you. I raise my voice to all people. You simple people, good, use good judgment. You foolish people, show some understanding. Listen to me, for I have important things to tell you. Everything I say is right, for I speak the truth and detest every kind of deception. My advice is wholesome. There is nothing devious or crooked in it. My words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those with knowledge. Choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. And to end, we are returning to our Psalm of Ascent with Selwyn Hughes. Um, this called the wonder of forgiveness based on Psalm 130, three and four. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Did the psalmist consider that his own sin might be responsible for the plight he was in? It would seem so from these verses. He is conscience, conscious of a great gulf that divides people from God, particularly himself. And he makes the assertion that if God kept a strict tally of mankind's sins, there would be no hope for anyone. But then come some of the most beautiful and wondrous words in the Old Testament. But with you, there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. The Living Bible paraphrases the verse like this, but you forgive. What an awesome thing this is. Eight times the divine named Lord, name Lord is used in this psalm. And as we observe how God is addressed, we see what a difference knowing him makes whatever plight we find ourselves in. He is addressed in the first couple of verses as the God who hears, and then in verses three to four as the God who forgives. What a wonderful thing it is that God forgives. 
It is, as the Living Bible puts it, awesome. As Christians, we are so used to hearing about God's forgiveness that we are in danger of taking it for granted. Heinrich Hein, when lying on his deathbed, was asked by a friend, do you think God has forgiven you? Hein replied, of course God will forgive me, that's his job. I hope none of my readers will approach the subject of divine forgiveness with such cynicism. The fact that God forgives and forgets is something that we will never really fully understand, but it must never be taken for granted. Oh, Father, forgive us if we have thought that divine forgiveness is just the result of you doing your job. Grant that our reaction to being forgiven will not be one of complacency, but of constant reverence and holy awe. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. <laughs> have a beautiful day. Love you all.